What's going on guys? Bruce here and welcome back to the channel. Holy shit! <laughs> What's going on guys? So tonight we are gonna get What the Ducks truck started up. We have everything ready to rock. Waiting a few small parts to show up. We'll have them tomorrow. The radiator, we actually ordered a new radiator for it and it showed up and it was just completely damaged from shipping. Um, so it's right there. We're gonna be sending it back to an auto parts store they did a really shitty job with. But anyways, back to the truck. So we're waiting on one more intake gasket to go here for the P-pump spacer. We've got a gasket there. We've got the grid heater delete. We are gonna go ahead and take get rid of his grid heater. The gasket, and then this is the P-pump spacer, which spaces the intake up enough to get over the, the P-pump injection lines. Um, one of the other things we have left to do is the AFC reference. We're gonna have a hose that comes out of the back of the AFC, you can see here comes up and around and hooks up to the back of the injection pump. That is one of the other things that's left to do. And then once that is done, we'll get the intake put back on and get the intercooler piping put back in place. We did get the new shutoff solenoid put on there. It is made by Larry Bees. Um, they do have a very, very nice and simple to use wiring harness with an 80 amp relay. So instead of using a 12 valve wiring harness and shutoff solenoid, um, we, well, we do have a 12 valve shutoff solenoid, but we use the Larry Bees solenoid harness which runs right to your fuse box for a key on power and we tap that into the starter wire right here which we still have to seal up and then we have a power on the ground of course that goes right here so for the afc reference we're actually going to use a boost gauge hose that runs from the air intake to the afc and what the afc reference does and that moves the um diaphragm inside here to allow for more fuel or less fuel depending on the boost condition of the truck the last thing left to do is the vent for the front of the engine here is we're gonna take, it's gonna come out with a 180. I think I have that laying right here somewhere. Let's see if I can find it. There we go. So our fittings will be here tomorrow from that for the speed shop. We're gonna come up with a 90 and go straight up. This will be the engine vent tube. It's gonna go straight. There are a couple things we're leaving for what the duck to do. Um, his factory engine oil dipstick had a crack in it. So we're gonna put it back on there with a rubber hose for now to make it work and get it back to him. I'm gonna let him fix that so he'll have some footage to cover repairing how to repair your dipstick. We did get a brand new Optima battery for him. One of his batteries was dead, so it had a bad cell. So we're gonna get that replaced and get him back going. We'll have that here tomorrow morning also. Other than that, the truck's pretty much done, ready to rock. We're about to get it fired up. So make sure you check that out and we'll go from there. All right, so the truck runs phenomenal. That loud noise you hear coming from the intake, it sounds like maybe a knock or you know, hickey, a tapping noise is from the just the way a diesel engine sounds without an intake manifold on it. So once we get that put on, that'll all go away and I'll be quiet as a mouse. Once we get it all put back together, I'll do a final adjustment on the idle 
get it idle down to where it needs to be with the AC and the drive and get all that set. We want it to be around 720 to 750 while it's in drive and idling so that it still doesn't, so it still has enough RPMs to do everything it needs to do without stalling at a red light. Um, we should be ready to rock by tomorrow, which will be Wednesday. And then I actually just got off the phone with him. We're gonna we're gonna make a trip up there to see him, my fiance and I, and take our Can Am and go ride polars this weekend. So that'll be a cool weekend to get to meet him and his brother. I think his brother's YouTube channel is Paradox. I'm not positive on that. And check that out. So just a little update on my end. The drag truck we haven't done much to. We're gonna try to get some. We're gonna try to get some more of it torn apart this week and get it up to um, ProFab Performance so they can get started on the cage for next year and get it going. We do have a lot of parts for sale. I don't know if anybody follows me on Facebook, so if you do have any questions about anything for 6.7 race and for stock form, I do have a lot of parts we're getting rid of and selling. Um, block's pretty much junk. We are selling the cam, the billet motor mounts, the intercooler, and the radiator. I'm gonna be selling both those and the intercooler pipes are going up for sale. Boggers that we did dirt drag racing with, I'm also going to sell. They're on weld wheels, 33 inch boggers, and they are cut. So you can't really street them. I guess you could if you really wanted to, but I wouldn't recommend it. But those are for sale also. So if you have any questions on that, don't hesitate to ask. So we're going to finish ripping all the factory wiring out of it, completely strip the truck down 100% to where there's nothing but cab and frame. And carry them. They're going to do some more fabrication on it, get rid of all the factory mounts. This is all going to be tubular right here going to the frame here just to cut weight down. The battery's getting moved to the back of the truck. There's just a lot of, a, a lot of changes coming to the drag truck for this year. And for we, um, right now we're in the talk with Bass and working out a sponsorship for next year. Um, talk to the DNJ Precision Machine as you've seen in my last video. We are gonna be going with them for our engine for next year. We're shooting for around 1800 horsepower with a GTX 55 on nitrous which shouldn't be a problem whatsoever. That should put us around a 550 mark eighth mile, but we are gonna be setting the truck out to run 590 index. So that's the goal for next year. The drag slicks are also for sale. So if anybody's interested in those, shoot me a message. This is my Can-Am 650. We're gonna be taking up this weekend for my fiance and I to ride with What the Duck. I know those guys have like 850s and 1000s, but this one gets the job done and she's able to ride it without any issues. The mud tires are hiding up there. We're going to be swapping those on. These are just for the drag strip. Make sure you tune in towards the end of the week. We have another P-Pump job we're trying to get finished up before Christmas. I'll be doing some videoing on that. I'll be getting the transmission and transfer case set in it and the dry shafts and get the cab put back on the truck. So make sure you stay tuned. I'd like to say thank you to all my new subscribers that have followed me from the engine explosion dyno video. Um, make sure you hit the like button, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, we'll see you later. They say when you get sawdust in your veins, it's kind of hard to get out of it. Ever since I can remember, I've always been passionate about a, a, a truck, and it's just something I love to do. In the 13 years that I've been in business for myself, I've worked on thousands of diesel pickups, Ford, Chevy, and Dodge. Well, driving a truck is, is, is a way of life. I'm a huge horsepower freak. The world record I hold is for the highest horsepower on a chassis dyno, you know, and I like winning. To drive one of these trucks is pretty intense. The fast product benefits us because we get to test it on the pulling track, make sure that it will do 10 times what it's going to do in its normal life. Uh, I got involved in trucking once I got out of the military. I love to travel, so this is one of the ways I can continue doing that. I believe the fast fuel system helps us operate and gives us more bottom line at the end of the week. We have picked up approximately close to a mile per gallon. It means a lot on a log truck. With the loads we pull and with our weight is where the fast system has showed itself. If it wasn't American made, it wouldn't be on my cameras.
recommend a fast fuel system because you will save yourself money in the long run. The filtration is key for any diesel pickup. Once you supply the engine with fuel, then it just goes up from there. When I put that fast fuel system on my truck, I see the immediate response. The rate of return on our fast system was 32 days. That's totally amazing to me. They start easier, they run smoother, they work. They absolutely positively work.